to Michael Popak, Legal AF. One of two things just happened. The Trump campaign and its campaign personnel like Stephen Chung either just admitted to violating Title III of the Federal Wiretapping Act by getting access illegally to a White House staff meeting led by the chief of staff, Jeff Zients, in which they were rallying the troops on uh, and the staff before the 4th of July weekend about Joe Biden and the Biden campaign. He either did that which and, and brought the receipts and acknowledged it in social media by saying things along the lines, we'll put them up on the screen here, wouldn't it be a shame if I got the call-in number to dial in for the White House staff meeting? Oh, see you all soon on the Wednesday staff meeting, Stephen Chung, and then do some reporting as if he had actually dialed in. If he had actually done that, that is a felony under federal law, under Title III, under, under the Electronic Communications Privacy Act. We colloquially refer to it as Title III. It's 18 U.S.C. Section 3121. It would be as big a story as what happened in Watergate, where they broke into the Democratic National Committee and its headquarters in the Watergate Hotel on the Republican side by the committee to reelect the president. Creep. That's how Nixon went down. So if for Stephen Chung, I, I I was a little bit suspicious that Stephen Chung was sort of, you know, with a tongue, maybe with tongue in cheek, was bragging about violating federal law. I mean, I wouldn't put it past anybody in the administration, formerly in the administration, or who wants to be in the administration. I mean, for this Trump campaign, you get your bona fides, you get your stripes. It's like a gang. You don't have to take out anybody. You just have to commit a crime a crime in favor of your your fearless cult leader. So Stephen Chung, on one hand, either committed the crime and therefore the Trump campaign and the Department of Justice should look into it because on its face and its social media posts, it looks like he's admitting to a Title III federal felony violation of the wiretapping statute because you're not allowed to dial in to somebody else's call especially white house staff when you're on the other when you're in the other party and just quietly quietly listen i mean that's different than a public trial where there's a call in number for a hearing or a trial and the judge allows the public to participate that's different if I set up a Zoom call for my law firm, you are not allowed to get the number surreptitiously and dial in. And, and, and if I don't catch you, it doesn't mean you haven't committed a crime. You have. You've improperly intercepted an oral communication. And the use of that information, such as the posting in social media about its contents, is also a crime. It's either that. Or Stephen Chung is just trying to take advantage of some gullible you know, people out there, and he's arguing that it is. Now, the reason I think it may be the latter, not the former, that they're not just conceding that they violated a federal statute on wiretapping, is that there seems to be a pretty good report out there uh, about what went down with Jeff Zients, the chief of staff, in the meeting. Now, of course, Stephen Chung repackaged it to make it look like, you know, feckless, no leadership by the Biden administration, telling everybody to bury their heads in the sand. I mean, not quite. Here's here's the uh, here's what's out there in the media that is very very similar but doesn't have the quite the spin of Zeitz, and this is what the report is, um, and this is from the AP. White House Chief of Staff Jeff Zeitz urged people during an all staff meeting on Wednesday to tune out the noise and focus on the task of governing as senior aides scramble to contain the political fallout from President Joe Biden's debate performance. Even as Zeitz acknowledged that the days since the Atlanta matchup have been challenging. The chief of staff stressed to White House aides the accomplishments and the track record of the administration and said governing will be become more crucial once the campaign season heats up, particularly after the 4th of July holiday. That's not bury your head in the sand. That is, we got a job to do. We're not just a campaign. Jeff Zients is the chief of staff of the political aides who are responsible for helping to pull the levers of power, right? This isn't a campaign. You know, Stephen Chung is Trump campaign. Uh, Jeff Zients is chief of staff operations for the White House. Those, that's a horse of a different color. So whether because of the peculiar accurateness of the reporting by Stephen Chung, whether that indicates, and the Department of Justice should take a deep look at this, you know, that, that alone is a shiny object that should get the Department of Justice's attention. Did Stephen Chung violate and admit to violating Title III of the Wiretapping Act because of the, it was so detailed 
when when other people entered the room, when they didn't enter the room, when the troops were addressed, how they were addressed, and the like, indicates maybe even beyond what was publicly then reported to reporters in the pool report that ended up on AP. So, um, so either somebody in the room leaked to Stephen Chung, which I would doubt, where Stephen Chung just repackaged what was already in the public domain, made it very negative, you know, which they're good at, and then got it out. I don't know which it is. I think the Department of Justice, though, has to get to the bottom of it. Um, I wouldn't put it, I mean, let's be frank, in, in the aftermath and the wake of the um, Supreme Court decision in Trump versus U.S., which Trump world, MAGA world has interpreted as a complete carte blanche, a get out of free, uh, get out of jail free card. That when I put it past this, this bravado, this hubris, this Icarus flying so close to the sun, Stephen Chung, if when I put it past him and saying, hey, boss, look at me, I'm going to commit a federal crime now, wiretapping, you'll pardon me when you get reelected or you get elected. No, I wouldn't put it past them. That's why we're taking it seriously, and I'm bringing it to you right here on the Midas Touch Network. Could it also be a head fake? A head fake? You know, or, or what does what does Trump call it? A cheap fake instead of a deep fake? Is it a cheap fake? You know, that, that he just repackaged an AP report and made it look like he had actually been a fly on the wall and violated federal law as a result. I don't know, but there's enough smoke there for the Department of Justice to go hunting around for the fire. And I don't care that it's the political rival. You know, this doesn't give them immunity and carte blanche, no pun intended, to do whatever the heck they want. And they have to be made accountable. So if I were the Department of Justice, I would have an FBI agent show up at Stephen Chung's, whatever he lives in, whatever rock he's under. They should go find it and lift it and go interrogate Stephen Chung about did he really uh, intercept illegally and admit to it? in the public domain, or did he lie about it? So he's either a liar or a criminal. That sounds familiar. That gives him complete bona fides to be back in the Trump administration should uh, should Trump win. I mean, I don't know how many more incentives people need to make sure that the Biden administration and all of its components and all of its personnel and all of its uh, leadership end up back in the White House than that. As I've said to friends and family and others in my life, if the ripping away of a woman's right to choose and and making her a sec and relegating her to a second class citizenship after the Dobbs decision, combined with a MAGA right wing Supreme Court that has created a imperial president, a Leviathan who sits above us all, with very little checks and balance at the criminal justice level, doesn't scare the crap out of you enough to go to the polls and vote for the other guy, given his track record given the people in his administration from top to bottom in all of his cabinet positions, then I don't know what, I don't know what will. I don't know what will. So we're going to continue to follow the hubris um, and the, uh, and, deter- and we're going to find out if the hubris of the Trump campaign is ultimately their Achilles heel and their undoing. Look, this is July. I'm a baseball fan. You don't win the pennant in July. You win the pennant these days in November. Same thing for presidential elections. I don't care how great a week Donald Trump had from the debate to the Supreme Court decision in July. That's why you don't want to peak in July. Hillary Clinton peaked in July. And that's why we we never had a president Hillary Clinton. You want to peak in October leading into November. And by the time we get to the election, we will have the sentencing of Donald Trump, likely in September, middle of September um, in New York. We'll have this issue of immunity uh, squashing and quashing all the other indictments being settled, um, in, in, I think, against Donald Trump. And we'll have the um, some results in some of his appellate cases that will already come out. These are more data points for people in the court of public opinion, which is what it's down to, as our president just recently said. Since the since the Supreme Court has has uh, emasculated the trial court system to do the right thing and to and to provide public justice, the public is going to have to do it at the polls. You don't like what the Supreme Court just did in uh, in uh, Trump versus U.S. Then vote against them in November, and vote against Donald Trump. 
You don't want crime to pay. You want to teach your children and those in your life that crime doesn't pay. Vote against Trump in November. This is not a hard equation. This is pretty binary, as most good and evil equations are. <laughs> I mean, I can't put it any more bluntly. You don't want an administration led by people like Stephen Chung who just blithely admit to potentially committing crimes because they think they can get away with it, then vote for the other guy who happens to be doing a fine job as the incumbent president. Look, we'll follow all of it at the intersection of law and politics, wherever it takes us. Nobody censors me. There's no, I don't blow smoke or sunshine. I bring it to you here, unvarnished, unplugged, untethered, sometimes unhinged, <laughs> right here on the Midas Touch Network. Free subscribe. I said free. Get them to 3 million free subscribers before the November election. It's it, it can't be more important. There's nothing more important right now to me than helping to grow and build this network. I've been here since day one. My employee badge number is four. Okay. And uh, it matters to me, as does my constitutional democracy. And I don't want it to have a going at a business sale on the July 4th weekend. Buy mattresses. Buy uh, linens, you know, buy whatever at your local, you know, uh, you know, Amazon plus days or whatever it is. I don't want the nation to go out of business. And I'm doing my part with your help to making sure that doesn't happen. Follow me, Michael Popak, Wednesdays and Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern time, right here on this YouTube channel. Uh, we do a podcast we call Legal AF. For those that didn't know why we call it that, now you know. And if you don't, Wednesdays, Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern time, and then on audio podcast platforms of your choice. And then I do hot takes like this, I don't know, about every half an hour on the My Touch Network. So if you like what I'm doing, give me a comment right here. Thumbs up right here. Open a dialogue with me right here. So until my next hot take, until my next Legal AF, this is Michael Popak reporting. Heary, heary, Legal AF Law Breakdown is now in session. Go beyond the headlines and get a deep dive into the important legal concepts you need to know and we discuss every day on Legal AF. Exclusive content you won't find anywhere else, all for the price of a couple of cups of coffee. Join us at patreon.com slash legal AF. That's patreon.com slash legal AF.